Colts. Something that has captured the attention and fascination of people for decades. A cult is a group of people which is usually led by charismatic and self-appointed leader who tightly controls its members and requires unwavering devotion to a set of beliefs and practices. Cults are often odd and interesting which is good because today's video is about cults and we will be diving into a ton of disturbing, weird, and interesting cults that have existed through history. Ranging from the Branch Davidians, which resulted in the loss of 76 people in a 51-day standoff with the ATF and FBI, to the famous Manson family, which resulted in the gruesome murders of nine people. By the way, I made this iceberg myself because I felt like there was no other good or interesting icebergs on the topic, so I decided to make this one. So let me know what you think of that. And all right, I'm excited to get into this iceberg, so welcome to the Colt Iceberg Explained. And actually, before we get into the video, consider subscribing to the channel. It's the channel's goal to be at 250,000 subscribers before the end of the year. And in terms of the Colt Iceberg video, consider subscribing so you can join the Snook Society. I don't know what this channel's cult would be called. All right, anyways, I'm really excited to get into this video. So let's get into tier one. This tier will mostly consist of mainstream and popular religions because in a lot of the cults lower and deeper down in the iceberg, many of the cults are radical extremes of some of these religions, so I'm just going to cover them now. So it makes a lot more sense deeper down in the iceberg. So I'm not calling any of these religions cults, I'm just covering them to add context and info to the iceberg and other cults that we will cover. And also skip to the timestamp on screen if you want to skip tier one just because they are very, very, very popular religions and you probably already know them. But I recommend just going and learning them again just because it makes a lot of the cults down below deeper in the iceberg make a lot more sense. But it's up to you. All right, starting off with Catholicism. Catholicism is a branch of Christianity that traces its origins back to Jesus Christ and the apostles. It is one of the oldest and largest branches of Christianity with over a billion followers worldwide. Central to Catholicism is the belief in the Trinity, God as the Father, Son which is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Catholics believe that Jesus is the Son of God who came to earth, lived a perfect life, died on the cross for the sins of humanity, and was resurrected. They also believe in the authority of the Pope who is considered the successor of St. Peter and the leader of the worldwide Catholic Church. Catholicism places great importance on sacraments including baptism, confirmation, the Eucharist, penance, anointing of the sick, holy orders, and matrimony. The sacraments are seen as outward signs of inward grace, through which believers receive spiritual nourishment and grace from God. Catholic worship typically includes Mass, which is centered around the Eucharist, where Catholics believe that bread and wine are transformed into the body and blood of Christ. The Mass involves prayers, readings from the Bible, and rituals. Catholics also venerate saints, believing that they are in heaven and also intercede on behalf of believers. Mary, the mother of Jesus, holds another special place in Catholic devotion as the mother of God. Catholicism has a very rich tradition of theology, philosophy, art and culture, and it has had a significant impact on the development of Western civilization and overall history. It also has a complex history, including periods of schism and reform, as well as interactions with other religions and cultures around the world. Hinduism Hinduism is one of the world's oldest religions, with roots dating back over 4,000 years. It is a diverse and complex religion with a wide range of beliefs, practices, and philosophies. Hinduism is often described as a way of life rather than a strict set of beliefs, as it encompasses a broad spectrum of rituals, customs, and spiritual paths. Central to Hinduism is the concept of Dharma, which refers to a moral and ethical duty and responsibilities that individuals must follow according to their caste, stage of life, and personal circumstances. The ultimate goal in Hinduism is to achieve moksha, or liberation from the cycle of death and rebirth, and attain union with the divine. Hinduism is characterized by a belief in reincarnation, the idea that the soul is eternal and undergoes a cycle of rebirths until moksha is attained. 
Karma, the law of cause and effect, governs the consequences of one's actions and determines the nature of future incarnations. Hinduism encompasses a vast array of deities, with worship practices varying greatly across different religions and communities. Some of the major gods and goddesses in Hinduism includes Brahma, which is the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, Shiva, the destroyer, Lakshmi, goddess of wealth, Saraswati, goddess of knowledge, and Durga, goddess of power. Hinduism is also rich in scripture, such as texts containing philosophical teachings, moral principles, and stories of gods and heroes. Hindu worship can take many forms, including rituals performed at home or in temples, meditation, yoga, chanting of mantras, and pilgrimage to sacred sites. Festivals play an important role in Hindu religious life, such as celebrating events from mythology in the changing seasons. Despite its diversity, Hinduism has core concepts and values that unite its followers, including Ashma, Dharma, Karma, and Siva, which all are such as things like nonviolence, duty and righteousness, action and consequence, and selfless service. Hinduism has also influenced and been influenced by other religions and cultures throughout its history, contributing to its dynamic and multifaceted nature. Judaism Judaism is one of the world's oldest monotheistic religions, meaning you only believe in one God, dating back over 3,000 years. It is the faith of the Jewish people, with a rich history, tradition, and culture. Central to Judaism is the belief in one God, who created the universe and entered into a covenant with the Jewish people. Key to Judaism is the Hebrew Bible, known as the Tanakh, which consists of three main sections, the Torah, the first five books, also known as the Pentateuch, the Nivium, which is the prophets, and the Kitavim, which is the writings. The Torah contains the foundational laws and teachings of Judaism, including the Ten Commandments, which are considered the moral and ethical code for Jews. Judaism places great emphasis on ethical monotheism, the idea that God is concerned with human actions and expects moral behavior from his followers. Jews are called to live out according to the commandments outlined in the Torah, which cover a wide range of ethical, ritual, and interpersonal obligations. Observance of the Sabbath, which begins at sundown on Friday and ends at the sundown on Saturday, is a central practice in Judaism. It is a day of rest and spiritual renewal marked by prayer, study, and spending time with family and community. Jewish worship takes place in synagogues, where congregants gather for prayer service, study sessions, and communal events. The synagogue serves as a center for religious, educational, and social activities within the Jewish community. Throughout its history, Judaism has gone under periods of development, interpretation, and adaptation, resulting in diverse religious movements and denominations, including Orthodox, Conservative, Reform, and Reconstructionist Judaism. Despite these differences, Jews around the world share a common heritage and connection to their faith, history, and identity as a people chosen by God. Atheism Atheism is the absence of belief in the existence of deities or gods. It is not a religion, but rather a philosophical or ideological position that rejects theism, which is the belief in the existence of at least one deity. Atheists typically base their worldview on reason, empirical evidence, and scientific inquiry rather than on faith or religious teachings. They may argue that there is an insufficient evidence to support the existence of gods, or the religious claims are not testable or falsifiable. There are various reasons why individuals identify as atheists. Some may have been raised in secular or non-religious households, while others may have come to atheism through critical examination of religious beliefs, philosophical inquiry, or personal experiences. Atheists may also reject religion due to concerns about its impact on society, its teachings, or its historical and cultural baggage. While atheism is often associated with skepticism towards religious claims, it does not inherently entail any specific moral or ethical code. Atheists may derive their moral values from various different sources such as humanism, rationalism, or cultural norms. Mormonism, also known as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or the LDS Church, is a religious movement that emerged in the early 19th century in the United States. It was founded by Joseph Smith Jr who claimed to have had a series of visions and revelations from God 
including the visitation of an angel named Moroni, which led to the discovery of golden plates containing the text of the Book of Mormon. Central to Mormonism is the belief in the Book of Mormon as scripture, alongside the Bible. The Book of Mormon is believed by Mormons to be a record of ancient inhabitants of the Americas, including the descendants of Israelites who migrated to the New World. It tells the story of these people, their interactions with God, and the ministry of Jesus Christ among them. Mormon theology teaches the concept of continuous revelation, the belief that God continues to communicate with humanity through prophets and other inspired individuals. Joseph Smith is considered the first prophet of the Latter-day Saint movement, and subsequent leaders, known as presidents or prophets, have continued to receive divine guidance for the church. Mormonism emphasizes family life, morality, and community service. Mormons adhere to a strict code of conduct that includes abstaining from alcohol, tobacco, coffee, and tea, as well as practicing chastity and honesty. They also believe in the importance of missionary work and actively seek to share their faith with others. Mormon worship includes Sunday services held in meeting houses or chapels, which typically include prayers, hymns, sermons, and sacraments, similar to communion. Mormons also participate in temple worship, which involves sacred audiences such as baptism for the dead, sealing of families for eternity, and other rituals central to Mormon theology. The LDS Church is organized hierarchically, with a president who serves as the prophet, seer, and revelator, alongside with two counselors and a quorum of twelve apostles. Below this leadership structure are various levels of priesthood authority, including bishops, stake presidents, and other local leaders. Mormonism has grown into a global faith, with millions of members worldwide. It has also faced criticism and controversy, especially regarding its history, theology, and social teachings, including issues related to race, gender, and LGBTQ rights. Despite these challenges, Mormonism continues to be a vibrant and influential religious movement with a distinct identity and culture. All right, now on to tier two. And since we got all of those kind of religions, mainstream religions out of the way, we can start getting into the more cult ish sort of ones and these will be more mellow i guess because it's tier two and it'll get more dark and disturbing as we go down so anyways starting off with scientology scientology is a religious movement founded by science fiction writer l ron hubbard in the early 1950s it emerged out of ron's self-help system called dianetics which he developed in his book dianetics the modern science of mental health Scientology combines elements of self-help, psychology, spirituality, and philosophy. Central to Scientology is the belief in the human spirit, or Thetan, which is considered immortal and capable of transcending the physical universe. Scientologists seek spiritual enlightenment and personal improvement through a process called auditing, which involves one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions with a trained auditor. Auditing aims to help individuals identify and overcome past traumas, negative emotions, and limiting beliefs that are believed to inhibit spiritual growth and success in life. During auditing sessions, individuals use an electronic device called an emitter to measure changes in their mental and emotional state. Scientology teaches that individuals are influenced by past experiences, including experiences from past lives, which are believed to affect one's current behavior emotions, and well-being. Through auditing and other Scientology practices, followers seek to rid themselves of these negative influences and achieve a state of spiritual freedom and enlightenment. Scientology also includes a set of religious teachings and practices known as the Bridge to Total Freedom, which outlines a series of levels or stages of spiritual development leading to enlightenment and self-realization. Progression through these levels typically involves extensive study of Scientology material, participation in courses and workshops, and financial contributions to the church, which is really um, controversial in you know the news and media because basically you can pay your way through these levels. But anyways, critics of Scientology have raised concerns about its practices, including its secretive nature, its treatment of members, its financial demands, and its legal battles with former members and critics. The church has faced controversy and scrutiny over allegations of abuse, fraud, and misconduct, leading to investigations by government agencies and legal challenges in various countries. 
Despite these controversies though, Scientology continues to attract followers from around the world and maintains a presence in many countries through its churches, missions, and affiliated organizations. The church usually promotes its teachings and practices through books, lectures, online courses, and outreach efforts, seeking to reach new audiences and expand its influence. Amish The Amish are a Christian religious group known for their distinctive way of life, which emphasizes simplicity, community, and separation from the broader society. They are descendants of Swiss Anabaptists who migrated to North America in the 18th century to escape religious persecution in Europe. Central to Amish beliefs is the principle of Gallicenite, which emphasizes humility, submission to God's will, and obedience to community authority. Amish communities are governed by a set of unwritten rules and traditions known as the Orndung, which regulates every aspect of daily life, including dress, behavior, technology use, and social interactions. Amish communities are characterized by the rejection of modern conveniences and technologies, such as electricity, automobiles, televisions, and computers. This rejection is based on the belief that these technologies can lead to worldly distractions, materialism, and moral decay, and can also disrupt the close-knit, Agarian way of life that the Amish value. Amish families typically live in rural agricultural communities, where they farm the land and engage in traditional crafts and trades such as woodworking, quilting, and blacksmithing. Work is seen as a form of worship and a way to honor God's creation. Amish worship takes place in private homes or meeting houses rather than in formal church buildings. Services are conducted in a mixture of English and German and include prayers, singing of hymns, readings from the Bibles, and sermons delivered by community members rather than ordained clergy. The Amish place a strong emphasis on family and community, with members expected to prioritize the needs of the group over individual desires. Social gatherings, communal meals, and shared work projects are common ways for Amish families and communities to come together and support one another. While the Amish strive to maintain a distinct way of life separate from mainstream society, they also interact with non-Amish neighbors and participate in local economics through trade, markets, and business ventures. Satanism Satanism is a term that encompasses a large range of beliefs, practices, and ideologies centered around the figure of Satan, often interpreted as a symbol of rebellion, individualism, and anti-authoritarianism. It is important though to note that Satanism is not a single, unified religion like others, but rather a diverse and multifaceted phenomenon with various interpretations and expressions. One of the most well-known forms of Satanism is Levain Satanism, founded by Anton Levay in the 1960s. Levain Satanism is atheistic and humanistic in nature, rejecting the existence of a literal Satan or any supernatural beings. Instead, it views Satan as a symbol of human nature, representing traits such as self-interest, individualism, and personal empowerment. LeVay and Satanism adhere to a set of guiding principles outlined in LeVay's book, The Satanic Bible, which includes self-preservation, indulgence, and the pursuit of personal happiness. Another form of Satanism is theistic Satanism, which does believe in the existence of a literal Satan as a deity or spiritual being. Theistic Satanists may worship Satan, invoke demonic entities, or engage in rituals and practices inspired by occult traditions. Other forms of Satanism include symbolic Satanism, which uses Satan as a symbol of opposition to religious and social norms, and Satanic Temple, which promotes secularism, human rights, and social justice through the use of Satanic imagery and activism. It's also important to recognize that while Satanism may evoke images of evil or malevolence, many Satanists do not adhere to harmful or destructive beliefs or practices. Instead, they may use Satanic symbolism as a means of expressing personal identity, challenging authority, or promoting individual liberty and autonomy. Calvinist Calvinism is a theological system within Protestant Christianity that originated with the teachings of the French theologian John Calvin in the 16th century. Calvinism is also known as Reformed Theology, named after the broader Protestant Reformation movement of which it is part. 
Central to Calvinism are the doctrines known as the Five Points of Calvinism, which are summarized by the acronym TULIP. Number one being T, which is total depravity. This doctrine teaches that, as a result of the fall of humanity, all people are born sinful and spiritually dead, incapable of saving themselves or earning salvation through good work. Number two, or the U, being unconditional election. This doctrine teaches that God, out of his sovereign will and grace, has chosen certain individuals for salvation, not based on anything they have done or will do, but solely based on his own purpose and mercy. Number three being the L or limited atonement. This doctrine teaches that Jesus Christ's atoning sacrifice on the cross was intended specifically for the elect, those whom God has chosen for salvation rather than for all of humanity. Number four being irresistible grace. This doctrine teaches that God's grace, when extended to the elect, is irresistible and cannot be thwarted by human will or resistance. Those whom God has chosen for salvation will inevitably come to faith and be saved. Number five being perseverance of the saints. This doctrine teaches that those who are truly regenerated by the Holy Spirit and brought to faith in Christ will persevere in their faith to the end of their lives. True believers cannot lose their salvation. Calvinism also emphasizes the sovereignty of God in all aspects of human life and history, the authority of scripture, the importance of preaching and teachings, and the need for a discipline and orderly church. Calvinism has also had a significant impact on Protestant theology, church practice, and culture, influencing various denominations and movements within Christianity. It has also shaped Western thought, including political philosophy, economics, and social ethics through its emphasis on individual responsibility, divine sovereignty, and the depravity of human nature. Today, Calvinism remains a vibrant theology tradition with adherents around the world. Jehovah's Witness Jehovah's Witness is a Christian denomination known for its distinctive beliefs, practices, and missionary work. The movement was founded in the late 19th century by Charles Taze Russell, and it emerged out of the Bible student movement in the United States. Jehovah's Witnesses are known for their active door-to-door -door evangelism and public preaching, in which they distribute literature and engage in conversations about their beliefs. They emphasize the importance of adhering closely to the teachings of the Bible, especially their own translation, the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. Central to Jehovah's Witness theology is the belief in Jehovah as the one true God, the creator of the universe. They reject the doctrine of the Trinity, teachings instead that Jesus Christ is a separate entity, the first and highest creation of Jehovah, and the agent through whom Jehovah created all other things. They also believe in the admitted establishment of God's kingdom on earth, which will bring about a paradise-like condition in the resurrection of the righteous. Jehovah's Witnesses do not celebrate holidays such as Christmas and Easter, which they believe have pagan origins, and they do not participate in certain practices or customs that they consider to be contrary to biblical principles, such as voting in political elections or serving in the military. They also refrain from blood transfusions, based on their interpretation of biblical passages prohibiting the consumption of blood. Jehovah's Witnesses are organized into congregations, which meet regularly for worship, Bible study, and fellowship. They are governed by hierarchical structure or appointing leaders and elders and overseers, who provide spiritual guidance and leadership within the community. Critics of Jehovah's Witnesses have raised concerns about their strict adherence to doctrinal belief, their insular nature, and their handling of issues such as child abuse allegations and medical treatment. However, Jehovah's Witnesses maintain their beliefs are based on a sincere interpretation of the Bible and that their mission is to share the message of God's kingdom with others in fulfillment of Jesus' command to preach the good news. All right, now on to tier three, starting off with hardline QAnon. Hardline QAnon refers to a more extreme or radical faction within the broader QAnon conspiracy theory movement. QAnon itself is a far-right conspiracy theory that emerged on internet forums in 2017, originating from anonymous posts by someone claiming to have insider knowledge of a secret plot against then-President Donald Trump by a group of Satan-worshipping global elites. While QAnon has various interpretations and levels of adherence among its followers, 
hardline QAnon adherents tend to embrace the more extreme and conspiratorial aspects of the movement. They often believe in the existence of a deep state conspiracy involving a network of corrupt politicians, government officials, and celebrities who are allegedly involved in child trafficking, satanic rituals, and other nefarious activities. Hardline QAnon followers may also adhere to other fringe beliefs, including anti-Semitic, anti-government, and anti-vaccine conspiracy theories. They may also reject mainstream media and sources of information, instead relying on alternative media sources, online forums, and social media platforms where QAnon content proliferates. In some cases, hardline QAnon followers may have been linked to acts of violence, harassment, and extremism. This includes instances of individuals committing criminal acts or engaging in threatening behavior based on their belief in QAnon conspiracy theories. And this is all alleged and I, in all of these um, entries I'm gonna be covering in this iceberg, this is all strictly internet information, no bias one way or the other. And so don't get mad at me for anything I say. This is all just strictly off the internet, no uh, personal bias at all. Cargo cults. Cargo cults are religious or social movements that emerged in the South Pacific region, especially in Melanesia, during the colonial period and beyond. These movements arose in response to encounters with Western colonial powers, especially during World War II, when large-scale military operations brought unprecedented amounts of material goods or cargo to the region. Cargo cults typically involve beliefs and practices centered around the expectation of receiving material wealth and benefits from supernatural or divine sources. Followers of cargo cults are believed that the arrival of Western goods, technology, and resources is a sign of divine favor or fulfillment of prophecies. The term cargo cult originated from observations made by anthropologists and Westerners who witnessed indigenous peoples in Melanesia engaging in rituals and ceremonies aimed at attracting cargo from the skies or the sea. These rituals often involve the construction of makeshift airstrips, control towers, and effigies of airplanes or ships, as well as mimicking of Western behaviors and symbols, such as wearing military uniforms or waving flags. Cargo cults can be seen as a form of cultural adaptation and resistance to colonial denomination, as indigenous people sought to make sense of and cope with the profound changes brought about by Western contact. They reflect the desire for material prosperity, social change, and empowerment in the face of colonial exploitation and marginalization. While cargo cults vary in their beliefs, practices, and manifestations, they often share common themes including a focus on prophetic leaders or messianic figures, the expectation of imminent salvation or deliverance, and the rejection or reinterpretation of Western institutions and values. Moonies Moonies is a term used to refer to members of the Unification Church, a religious movement founded by Sun Moon in South Korea in 1954. Moonies gained prominence in the Western world, especially in the United States, during the later half of the 20th century. Central to the teachings of the Unification Church is the belief in Sun Moon as the Messiah and the true parent, sent by God to fulfill the mission of restoring humanity to a state of spiritual purity and unity. Moon claimed to have received a revelation from God at the age of 16 and dedicated his life to spreading his message of love, peace, and spiritual renewal. The Unification Church emphasizes the importance of marriage and family, viewing the family unit as a central to the fulfillment of God's plan for humanity. Moon conducted mass wedding ceremonies known as blessings in which thousands of people were married simultaneously as part of the church's efforts to promote unity and harmony among people of different races, nationalities, and religions. Moonies have been known for their fervent devotion to Sun Moon and their willingness to make personal sacrifices in service to the church's mission. They have also been involved in various charitable and humanitarian activities including efforts to promote world peace, interfaith dialogue, and social welfare. However, the Unification Church has faced criticism and controversy over the years especially regarding its unconventional beliefs, practices, and organizational structure. Moonies have been accused of engaging in cult-like behavior, including mind control tactics, manipulation, and exploitation of members. The mass wedding ceremonies and strict hierarchical structure of the church have also drawn scrutiny from outsiders. 
Peyote Religion The Peyote Religion, also known as the Native American Church, or the NAC, is a religious movement that originated among indigenous peoples in North America, especially among the Plains Indians in the late 19th century. Central to the peyote religion is the ceremonial use of the peyote cactus, which contains the psychoactive compound mescaline. Peyote has been used for spiritual and medicinal purposes by indigenous peoples in North America for thousands of years, and its ceremonial use has been documented among various tribes. The peyote religion emerged as a syncretic movement that combined traditional indigenous beliefs and practices with elements of Christianity, especially Protestantism. The core ceremony of the peyote religion is the peyote or meeting ceremony, which typically takes place in a teepee or other sacred space and involves the consumption of peyote as a sacrament. Participants gather to pray, sing, and commune with the spirit world seeking spiritual guidance, healing, and communion with the divine. Central to the peyote religion is the belief in the power of peyote to facilitate spiritual experiences, visions, and insights, as well as its ability to connect individuals to the natural world and to one another. The ceremony is guided by a roadman or spiritual leader who oversees the proceedings and leads the prayers and rituals. The peyote religion places a strong emphasis on communal harmony, respect for nature, in the pursuit of spiritual growth and healing. It promotes values such as humility, honesty, and compassion, and encourages participants to live in harmony with the land and with one another. The peyote religion has faced challenges and persecution throughout its history, including efforts by government authorities to suppress peyote use and cultural practices among indigenous people. However, it has gained legal recognition and protection in the United States, where it is recognized as a legitimate religious practice under the American Indian Religious Freedom Act of 1978. Today, the peyote religion continues to be practiced by members of various indigenous tribes in North America, as well as by non-indigenous individuals who have been initiated into its teachings and ceremonies. It remains an important expression of indigenous spirituality and cultural identity, as well as its source of healing, guidance, and connection for its followers. Cult of the Angels Yazdanism, also known as the Yezidi faith, is an ancient Kurdish religious tradition with roots in the region of Mesopotamia, particularly in what is now northern Iraq, northeastern Syria, southeastern Turkey, and northwestern Iran. It is one of the oldest surviving religions in the world with a history that dates back thousands of years. Yazdanism is a faith that incorporates elements of Zoroastrianism, Islam, Christianity, and other indigenous Mesopotamian religious traditions. Central to Yazdanism is the belief in a supreme deity known as Yazdan, who is often represented as transcendent and unknowable. The term Yazdan itself means divine or godly in Kurdish. Yazdanism also includes a pantheon of angelic beings, often referred to as the Melik or Melik Thas or the Peacock Angel, who serves as intermediaries between humanity and the divine. Melik Tos is particularly revered as the chief angel and a symbol of divine benevolence and protection. The Yazidi faith places a strong emphasis on the importance of purity, morality, and devotion to the divine. Yazidis engage in various religious rituals, ceremonies, and festivals throughout the year, including communal prayers, pilgrimages to sacred sites, and celebrations honoring important events in their religious calendar. Yazdanism has faced persecution and discrimination throughout its history, especially at the hands of dominant Islamic rulers in neighboring communities. The Yazidis have often been misunderstood and misrepresented by outsiders, leading to myths and stereotypes about their beliefs and practices. In recent years, Yazdanism has gained greater visibility and recognition on the global stage, especially following the persecution and displacement of the Yazidi communities by the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, which the Islamic State is also known as ISIS. Efforts have also been made to raise awareness about Yazidi culture, religion, and heritage, as well as to support Yazidi communities in preserving their identity and traditions. Appalachian Snake Churches The term Appalachian Snake Churches refers to a small subset of Christian churches found primarily in the Appalachian region of the United States, especially in states like Kentucky, Tennessee, West Virginia, and parts of the Carolinas. These churches are known as serpent-handling churches 
or signs following churches. The practice of serpent handling in these churches involves the handling of venomous snakes, such as rattlesnakes or copperheads, as a sign of divine protection and faith in God's power. Believers interpret certain messages from the Bible, especially from the Gospel of Mark, um, particularly Mark chapter 16 verses through 17 through 18, as indicating the handling of snakes is a sign of true faith and a demonstration of divine protection above believers. And the specific verse that says that they should handle the snakes is, and I quote, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. End quote. Snake handling is typically practiced during worship services, where believers may handle snakes as part of their religious rituals often accompanied by singing, praying, and preaching. The handling of snakes is seen as a test of faith and a way to demonstrate one's devotion to God. Although not all churches in the Appalachian region practice snake handling, and the practice is controversial, even within Christian communities, many mainstream Christian denominations, including Pentecostal and Charismatic churches, do not endorse or condone serpent handling, citing safety concerns and theological differences. Snake handling has also faced legal restrictions in some states due to safety concerns and incidents of injury or death resulting from snake bites. Nevertheless, it's interesting, and snake handling continues to be practiced by a small number of churches and believers in the Appalachian region, where it remains an important part of religious identity and tradition for some communities. Fundamentalist Polygamous Desert Mormons The term of Fundamentalist Polygamous Desert Mormons typically refers to a group of individuals or communities that identify as Mormons and adhere to fundamentalist beliefs and practices, including the practice of polygamy, and are located in desert regions, especially in the western United States. These groups often trace their origins to the early days of Mormonism in the 19th century when plural marriage was practiced openly by members of the LDS Church. In 1890, however, the LDS Church officially renounced the practice of polygamy as a result of pressure from the United States government, which had outlawed the practice through anti-polygamy legislation. Despite the LDS Church's abandonment of polygamy, some members continued to practice it clandestinely often forming their own separate communities or sects. Over time, these groups became known as Fundamentalist Mormons or Polygamist Mormons. Fundamentalist Polygamist Mormon groups typically adhere to a strict interpretation of early Mormon teachings and consider themselves to be true successors of the original Mormon movement. They often reject the authority of the LDS Church and its leadership, believing that it has strayed from the teachings of Mormon founder Joseph Smith and the subsequent prophets. These groups may vary in their beliefs and practices, but polygamy remains a central tenet for many of them. In addition to polygamy, fundamentalist Mormon communities may also practice other distinctive beliefs and practices such as living in isolated communities, adhering to traditional gender roles, and homeschooling their children. Fundamentalist polygamist Mormon communities have faced legal challenges and social stigma due to their practice of polygamy, which is illegal in the United States. Law enforcement agencies have occasionally conducted raids and investigations into allegations of underage marriage, child abuse, and other crimes within these communities. Michael Teachings The Michael Teachings is a spiritual and metaphysical belief system that originated in the 1970s through the work of the channeler named Chelsea Quinn Yarbrough. According to these teachings, Chelsea channeled a group of spiritual entities known as Michael, who claim to be a collective consciousness or entity composed of several thousand souls who have completed their earthly incarnations. The Michael teachings usually offer insights into various aspects of human existence, including personality traits, soul evolution, and the nature of the universe. Central to the teachings is the concept of soul age, which categorizes individuals into one of seven soul ages, infant, baby, young, mature, old and transcendental. Each soul age is associated with different characteristics, challenges, and stages of spiritual development. In addition to soul age, the Michael teachings often describe seven personality traits or roles that individuals may embody during their lifetimes, which are server, artisan, warrior, scholar, sage, 
Priest, and King. Each role is associated with specific strengths, weaknesses, and life lessons, and individuals may identify with one or more roles over the course of their incarnations. The Michael teachings emphasize the importance of self-awareness, personal growth, and spiritual evolution. Followers of the teachings may use them as a framework for understanding themselves and others, gaining insights into their life paths and relationships, and navigating the challenges of human existence. While the Michael teachings have gained a following among some individuals interested in spirituality, metaphysics, and personal development, they are not widely recognized or accepted within mainstream religious or spiritual communities. Critics of the teachings may question the validity of channeling as a method of spiritual communication or raise concerns about the lack of empirical evidence to support their claims. Freedomites The Freedomites, also known as the Sons of Freedom, were a radical sect of Russian Dukhohorbers who immigrated to Canada in the late 19th and early 20th centuries to escape persecution in Russia due to their pacifist beliefs. The Dukhohorbers, whose name means spirit wrestlers or fighters of the spirit, were a Christian sect that emerged in the 18th century as a protest movement against the Orthodox Church and the Russian government. The Freedomites broke away from the main body of the Dukhohorbers in the early 20th century due to disagreements over religious doctrine and practices. They rejected the authority of the Dorkobor leaders and government regulations, instead advocating for a more radical interpretation of the beliefs centered around communal living, simplicity, and nonconformity. The Freedomites were known for their acts of civil disobedience, including protests against government policies and social norms. They engaged in various forms of protests such as nude marches, arson attacks on government buildings and property, and other acts of defiance intended to challenge authority and assert their freedom of conscience. One of the most infamous incidents involving the Freedomites was the burning of the bras in the 20s and 30s, where they publicly burned their traditional Russian military-style coats and other symbols of authority as a symbolic rejection of government control and coercion. The Freedomite movement was marked by internal divisions and conflicts, as well as external pressure from government authorities in mainstream society. Over time, many Freedomites assimilated into Canadian society, while others continued to adhere to their radical beliefs and practices. Today, the legacy of the Freedomites lives on into the culture and historical memory of the Dorkohorber community in Canada, as well as in the broader context of religious and social movements advocating for freedom of conscience, pacifism, and social justice. Tier 4 – Children of God the Children of God, later known as the Family International, is a religious movement that was founded in 1968 by David Berg, also known as Moses David or Father David. The group emerged during the counterculture movements of the 60s and 70s and initially attracted young people who were disillusioned with mainstream society and seeking spiritual fulfillment. The Children of God emphasized communal living, evangelism, and a radical interpretation of Christian teachings. They believed in the imminent return of Jesus Christ and saw themselves as preparing for the end times. The group engaged in intensive missionary work, often using unconventional methods such as street evangelism, distributed literature, and performing music and drama to attract new followers. One of the most controversial aspects of the Children of God was its practice of flirty fishing which involved female members engaging in sexual relationships as a form of evangelism. This practice, which was promoted by David Berg, was later discontinued amid criticism and legal concerns. Over time, the Children of God underwent several transformations and name changes as the group sought to distance itself from its controversial past. In 1978, David Berg introduced the term the Family of Love to replace Children of God. And in 1982, the group officially adopted the name The Family in 2004. The organization rebranded itself as The Family International. Despite its efforts to reform and rebrand, The Family International has continued to face criticism and controversy over its teachings, practices, and allegations of abuse within the group. Former members have accused the organization of psychological manipulation, sexual exploitation, and other forms of misconduct. Today, the Family International describes itself as a Christian missionary organization that is active in humanitarian work, community outreach, and promoting its interpretation of Christian values. Reactive Satanism 
Reactive Satanism is a term used to describe a type of Satanism that is defined in opposition to or reaction against mainstream religious beliefs or societal norms. Unlike traditional or theistic Satanism, which may involve the worship or veneration of Satan as a deity, Reactive Satanism is more about rebellion and rejecting prevailing religious or cultural norms, so it basically just goes against all religion. Reactive Satanists adopt satanic imagery, symbols, and rhetoric as a means of expressing defiance or skepticism towards authority, tradition, and organized religion. They may engage in practices such as ritual magic, blasphemy, or symbolic acts of rebellion to challenge social conventions and assert their individuality or autonomy. Reactive Satanism is often associated with counterculture movements, subcultures, and marginalized communities where anti-establishment sentiments are prevalent. People's Temple The People's Temple was a religious movement founded by Jim Jones in Indianapolis, Indiana in the 1950s. Initially, the group was affiliated with mainstream Protestantism and espoused principles of racial equality and social justice. However, over time, it evolved into a more radical organization with characteristics of a cult. Under the leadership of Jim Jones, the People's Temple moved to California in the 60s and established a large following, especially among marginalized communities such as African Americans and the economically disadvantaged. Jones preached a message of socialism, racial equality, and communal living. And the group operated social service programs including soup kitchens, homeless shelters, and medical clinics. Despite these positive aspects, the People's Temple became increasingly authoritarian and isolated from mainstream society. Jones exercised total control over his followers using manipulation, coercion, and fear tactics to maintain his grip on power. Members were subjected to psychological and physical abuse, and dissent was not tolerated. In November 1978, the People's Temple gained international notoriety when over 900 of its members died in a mass murder S-word at their compound in Jonestown, Guana. Jones convinced his followers to consume a cyanide-laced drink, resulting in the largest single loss of American civilian life in a deliberate act until the September 11th attacks in 2001. The tragedy at Jonestown led to widespread scrutiny of cults and new regulations to prevent similar incidents in the future. It raised questions about the nature of charismatic leadership, the vulnerability of the followers to manipulation, and the importance of critical thinking and skepticism of these certain groups. The People's Temple remains a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked power, manipulation, and the potential for extreme beliefs to lead to tragic consequences. Siberian Old Believers the Siberian Old Believers are a group of Russian Orthodox Christians who adhere to the Old Belief, a conservative branch of Russian Orthodoxy that split from the mainstream Russian Orthodox Church in the 17th century over religious reforms introduced by Patriarch Nikon. Patriarch Nikon implemented a series of changes to the Russian Orthodox liturgical practices, rituals, and texts with the aim of aligning them more closely with the Greek Orthodox traditions. However, these reforms were met with resistance by some members of the Russian Orthodox Church who believed that they deviated from the true orthodoxy and violated tradition. The dissenters, known as the Old Believers, refused to accept the reforms and were subsequently persecuted by the Russian Orthodox Church and the state. Many Old Believers fled to remote areas of Russia, including Siberia, to escape persecution and preserve their traditional beliefs and practices. In Siberia, the Old Believers established isolated communities where they could live according to their own customs and traditions. They maintained their distinctive religious practices including adherence to the pre-Nikonian liturgical text, the use of two fingers for making the sign of the cross as opposed to the three fingers adopted by the mainstream church, and the preservation of traditional Russian folk culture. The Siberian Old Believers have managed to preserve their religious and cultural heritage through centuries of isolation and hardship. Today, they continue to maintain their traditional way of life in remote villages and settlements scattered throughout Siberia and other parts of Russia. Nexium was a multi-level marketing company and purported self-help organization founded by Keith Rainier in 1998. Despite presenting itself as a personal and professional development program, Nexium became infamous for its involvement in allegations of criminal activity, including S-trafficking, 
racketeering and forced labor under the guise of offering courses and workshops aimed at personal growth and empowerment. Nexium employed coercive and manipulative tactics to recruit and retain members. Participants were drawn into a hierarchical structure with Rainier at the top and were encouraged to take multiple expensive courses to advance within the organization. One of the most notorious aspects of Nexium was its secret subgroup known as TOS or Dominus Obiquus Sororium, which operated as a pyramid scheme and engaged in abusive and exploitative practices. Female members of DOS were allegedly subjected to sexual exploitation, forced to provide collateral to ensure their loyalty, and branded with her nearest initials near their pelvis. So, you know, really bad stuff. I mean, they're branding people. In 2017, investigative journalism by various media outlets exposed the dark side of Nexium, leading to a federal investigation and criminal charges against Rainier and several high-ranking members of the organization. In 2019, Rainier was convicted on charges including racketeering, s trafficking, forced labor, and conspiracy, and he was sentenced to 120 years in prison. The downfall of Nexium shed light on the dangers of charismatic leaders and cult-like organizations that exploit vulnerable individuals under the guise of personal and spiritual development. Tier 5 and the last tier, the Manson Family. The Manson Family, also known as the Manson Cult, was a quasi-communal cult led by Charles Manson that emerged in the late 60s in California, United States of America. Manson, a charismatic but deeply troubled individual, attracted a group of mostly young, impressionable followers who became devoted to him and his apocalyptic worldview. The Manson family gained infamy primarily due to their involvement in a series of brutal murders that shocked the nation in 1969. The most notorious of these murders were the Tate LaBianca murders. Actress Sharon Tate, who was pregnant at the time, along with several others, was brutally killed at her home, followed by another brutal murder of a couple, Lino and Rosemary LaBianca, the following night. The murders were carried out by Manson's followers under his instructions, as part of a plan to incite a race war he called Helter Skelter, named after the Beatles song. The Manson family's ideology was a mix of apocalyptic visions, racial tensions, and Manson's own delusionals of grandeur. Manson believed that an impending race war between blacks and whites would lead to a societal collapse, and he aimed to trigger this war through violent acts that he believed would be attributed to the opposing racial groups. Manson exerted considerable control over his followers, manipulating them through a combination of psychological manipulation, drugs, and his charismatic personality. He fostered an environment of fear, paranoia, and an unquestioning loyalty within the group, isolating them from mainstream society and indoctrinating them with his radical beliefs. After the murders, Manson and several of his followers were arrested and charged with multiple counts of murder and conspiracy to commit murder. Manson's trial received widespread media coverage and became a symbol of the dark side of the 1960s counterculture. Manson and most of his followers were convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment. The Manson family's crimes and their charismatic leader have left a lasting impact on American culture. The case has been the subject of numerous books, films, documentaries, and other media, with many seeking to understand the motivations behind the murders and Manson's hold over his followers. It remains one of the most notorious and studied criminal cases in American history. LeBaron Family the LeBaron family, also known as the Church of the Firstborn of the Fullness of Times, or simply the LeBaron Group, is a fundamentalist Mormon sect that split from the mainstream Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in the early 20th century. The group was founded by Alma Dayer LeBaron Sr. and his brother Joel LeBaron in Mexico in the 1920s. The LeBaron family adheres to beliefs and practices that are distinct from those of the LDS Church including the practice of polygamy, which is central to their faith. Members of the LeBaron family believe that plural marriage is essential for achieving exaltion in the afterlife and continue to practice it despite its prohibition by the LDS church. Over the years, the LeBaron family has faced internal divisions and conflicts, leading to the emergence of various splinter groups and factions within the larger community. One of the most notorious factions was led by Erville LeBaron, a son of Alma Day or LeBaron Sr., who claimed to be a prophet and had a violent and authoritarian leadership style. Ervil LeBaron and his followers were involved in a series of murders and other criminal activities in the 1970s and 80s. 
including the assassination of rival leaders and apostates within the LeBaron community. The violence perpetrated by Ervil LeBaron and his followers earned the group infamy and led to increased scrutiny in law enforcement investigation and intervention. Despite all of these challenges, the LeBaron family continues to exist today, with members scattered across various communities in Mexico, the United States, and other countries. While some members have distanced themselves from the violent legacy of Ervil LeBaron and his followers, others remain committed to their fundamentalist beliefs and practices, including polygamy and separatism from mainstream society. Ant Hill Kids The Ant Hill Kids, also known as the Ant Hill Gang, was a notorious cult led by Rock Thero in Canada during the 70s and 80s. Theralt was a charismatic but deeply disturbed individual, attracted followers to his commune in the wilderness of Ontario, where he established a strict and abusive regime centered around his belief that he was a prophet sent by God. Theralt's commune, located near Burnt River, Ontario, initially seemed like a utopian community where members could live according to their own spiritual ideas. However, behind the facade of religious devotion lay a darker reality of manipulation, coercion, and extreme violence. Under his leadership, the Ant Hill Kids engaged in a range of extreme and often brutal practices in the name of spirituality and personal growth. He claimed to have the power to heal and perform miracles, but he also subjected his followers, including women and children, to horrific physical and psychological abuse. Members of the Ant Hill Kids were subjected to beatings, mutilations, and forced amputations, where Theralt justified as punishments for perceived transgressions or as part of their spiritual journey. He exercised total control over his followers, who were isolated from mainstream society and dependent on him for their basic needs and survival. The group's activities came to public attention in the late 80s when several former members managed to escape and report the abuses to authorities. In 1989, Theralt was arrested and charged with multiple counts of assault, kidnapping, and murder. The trial revealed the full extent of the horrors that had taken place within the commune. Theralt was eventually convicted of first-degree murder in the death of one of his followers, Selang Boyard, who had died as a result of severe beatings and mistreatment. He was sentenced to life imprisonment and died in prison in 2011. The case of the Ant Hill Kids shocked Canadians and prompted inquiries into the regulation of cults and religious groups. Heaven's Gate Heaven's Gate was a religious cult founded in the 1970s by Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles. The group blended elements of Christianity, New Age spirituality, and UFO beliefs, promoting the idea that their members could achieve salvation by transcending their earthly bodies and ascending to a higher plane of existence. Central to Heaven's Gate's teachings was the belief that Earth was about to be recycled and that the only way to escape this impending apocalypse was to leave their human bodies behind and join an alien spacecraft trailing to the Hale Bop Comet. Applewhite, who was known as Doe, and Nettles, known as T, taught their followers that they were extraterrestrial beings who had come to Earth to guide them to salvation. Members of Heaven's Gate lived a highly regimented and isolated existence, often separating themselves from friends and family to devote themselves fully to the group's teachings. They adopted strict lifestyles including celibacy, vegetarianism, and the renunciation of personal possessions in preparation for their journey to the, quote, next level. In March 1997, Applewhite and 38 of his followers committed mass S-word at their compound in Rancho Santa Fe, California, believing that their souls would be transported to the awaiting spacecraft and transported to a higher realm. The group's bodies were found dressed in identical black clothing and wearing Nike sneakers, with purple shrouds covering their faces. The mass S-word shocked the world and drew widespread media attention to Heaven's Gate and its beliefs. The incident raised questions about the dangers of cults and the influence of charismatic leaders as well as the role of belief systems in social isolation and extreme behavior. The legacy of Heaven's Gate continues to fascinate and disturb observers, serving as a cautionary tale about the dangers of unquestioning devotion to charismatic leaders and belief systems. The group's website, maintained by former members, remains online as a testament to their beliefs and experiences. The Source Family The Source Family was a spiritual commune and religious group founded by James, 
Father Yod, Baker in Los Angeles in the early 1970s. The group blended elements of Eastern mysticism, alternative health practices, and psychedelic spirituality, attracting a diverse group of followers seeking spiritual enlightenment and communal living. James Baker, a former Marine and ex-con turned health food restauranter, reinvented himself as Father Yod, the charismatic leader of the Source family. He preached a message of love, peace, and self-discovery, advocating for a holistic lifestyle that emphasized vegetarianism, yoga, meditation, and psychedelic experiences. The Source family lived in a sprawling mansion in the Hollywood Hills known as the Mother House, where they practiced their unique blend of spirituality and communal living. Members adopted new names and lived accordingly to a strict code of conduct, with Father Yod as their spiritual guide and patriarch. The group gained attention for its unconventional beliefs and practices, as well as its connections to Hollywood celebrities, musicians, and counterculture figures. The Source family became known for their health food restaurant, The Source, which attracted a celebrity clientele and became a hub for the Los Angeles hippie scene. Despite their outward appearance and kind of perfect outward appearance, the Source family faced internal tensions and conflicts, including allegations of S-exploitation and abuse by Father Yod. In 1975, Father Yod died in a hang gliding accident, leading to a gradual disillusion of the group as members dispersed and went their separate ways. The Source family's legacy continues to be remembered for its influence on the alternative spirituality movement of the 70s and its exploration of communal living, holistic health practices, and spiritual seeking. While the group ultimately disbanded, its story remains a weird and fascinating chapter in the history of American counterculture and during the 70s. And all right, that wraps up The Cult Iceberg Explained. I know I've made this one before, but I just wanted to remake it because I think I could have done it. I could have served the entire idea better. And uh, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. We're an hour in because you know the video is an hour long so consider subscribing and liking the video if you want to see more and it just helps out the channel a lot and also comment down below what you liked about this video what you didn't like you know all feedback is much appreciated so yeah all right until next time see you guys